Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Here we are, August already. My goodness, where did the time fly by? This has been a much quicker year than last year. Last year, drug because of all the masks, and now we're having an opportunity to wear masks again. They're saying we're going to wear masks again. I don't know. Um, maybe if we'd worn two masks when when Fauci said we should wear two masks, then we wouldn't have to wear a mask now. I wonder if I wore two masks before I could sign up and say I already wore two masks, so I don't have to wear this mask. <laughs> this is crazy. And the vaccines work so well that you need to wear a mask if you got the vaccine. So lots of lots of interesting things about this. And now they're getting the, they showed some news clips the other day on the news. Um, we watch Newsmax on YouTube instead of the, the normal stations and uh, feel like we get a little more honest stuff not that the newscasters on the other stations are bad they just are actors and they just read whatever somebody tells them to read so but um we were watching some and they were showing us some where the they were playing some of the clips from regular some of the regular news stations and they were saying that oh it's one lady one lady said the problem is the reason it's coming back and we're having this problem is because of the people that aren't unvaccinated and most of the unvaccinated are Republicans, and most of the Republicans are evangelical Christians. So I'm seeing that this is starting to hone down where people are gonna to begin to blame Christians for their problems. And, um, you know, and uh, you know that started with Adam. He's blamed God for Eve, you know. So it, they've been blaming Christians all along. They've been blaming God all along. So we'll just have to see how this pans out over the next, uh, the next election cycle i'm sure that they got a long time they got a year yet to keep this all stirred up to try and you know have more and more problems now they're saying more people are dying from heart attacks and the flu and cancer and everything else all combined than the people that are dying from the pandemic so i don't know it's uh do you ever think about pandemic pan was the the uh i think it was a greek god pan was the was that it was satan was similar to Satan, and then pandemic, demonic, pandemonic. <laughs> so it's it's Satan's demonic attack on humans, which is always is health and sickness and disease. But here we are, August fifth, um, and I believe we are in the last days. I believe we are the army of God on earth today, and I believe God's army should be on the offense and not on the defense. I believe we should know who or what we're fighting against and advance with the power of the Holy Spirit. However, I believe we should understand how God wants his army to act. It seems the church is reacting instead of acting. Um, I think during the 80s, we were just we just sang a, sang a song uh, by the Katinas from, I suppose, the 80s or 90s, when it was late 80s, early 90s. Um, uh, Lord, I give you my heart, and, and they just the song, you know, goes through the lyrics. I give you my heart, Lord. I give you my soul. I give you my mind. And I think back in church in those days, and um, those are the days when you wore a suit and tie, and the ladies wore dresses, and and um, not that clothes had anything to do it. I'm just remembering, reminiscing, and and um, and I just remember all those people singing songs like that with such enthusiasm. And I think back, was that true? Were the people really giving him his heart, giving their you know soul, and giving their mind? Because there wasn't much conflict then. We were pretty much Christianity was pretty much go to church and and praise God and have a lot of fun and fellowship and and a lot of cantatas and plays and all kinds of festivals and feasts and and that was all wonderful. But I just wonder how much. You know those people really were given their heart and giving their mind and giving their soul um i for one probably really wasn't um i thought i was i thought i you know but when i think back of of how comfortable our life was and how little evangelism we actually did and i actually did a lot of evangelism and i think how many people did no evangelism at all and um and i don't know why i had that in my heart but i did and so it's um I've just been enthusiastic for God, and it's the Holy Spirit, not me. But um, I just wonder where we really are with all this. <clears throat> but now we're getting to a point where the church is more reacting instead of acting. Um, they're reacting to all the negative things that are going on. Um, 
I went to a store the other day, yesterday actually, and um, there was a <clears throat> girl of sorts and had on a pin that said, my pronouns are he, him, and himself or something. I don't remember the three. There was three of them, but I don't remember what they were. And I asked her, I said, what is that? And she says, well, that's, that's who I am now. I'm in, I'm in transition. I'm becoming a, a man. And I thought to myself, how do I respond to that? You know, I, how do I respond to that, Lord? And I, I didn't have, to, I had to stay there for a few minutes and, and uh, I was out of line and I told the Lord, you know, I'll go back and talk to her if the line shortens up because there was a line behind there. And I had to wait a minute because actually we were at a, at a, uh, pet smart and I was waiting for the dog's nails to be cut and um, his nails were getting obtrusively long so um, we we're having them cut and it's not our dog it's our granddaughter's so uh, it was my dog I cut the nails myself but anyhow it's uh, I was standing there waiting I said Lord if the line shortens up I'm gonna go back and talk to her but I was praying what do you say and I witnessed to some other people while I was there waiting and and um, it just was uh, Never got the opportunity to go back, but I thought to myself, you know, what I want to ask her is, are you really trans, uh, transforming yourself? You know, are you really in the process of being transformed into a man? Um, because, and I was going to ask her this, I said, but your chromosomes will never change. Your chromosomes, unless somebody comes in and begins to figure out how to change DNA, and I know they're working on that, but if you don't change your DNA, you're still whatever sex you were born with, um, and all you've done is take uh, some pills to, you know, to be something else that you're not. It's really, it's really kind of a performance. It's like putting on a costume. Um, you're just putting on a biological costume and um, pretending to be something that you aren't. Um, because you're dissatisfied with what God created you to be. And in many ways, most of us are dissatisfied in some aspects of how we were created to be, but, um, but we just have to count it all joy and uh, praise God because the presence of the Holy Spirit in us should bring love and joy and peace and patience, etc. So um, we should be joy. All, Paul, Paul said rejoice again. I say rejoice, always rejoice. Um, so, we should be rejoicing who we are, but um, I, I, I expect that if the Lord had let me go back and I said that about the chromosomes, that uh, it probably wouldn't have advanced the cause of Christ at all, because I said to the Lord, I said, I'll go back, I'm willing to go back and mention that to her if the line shortens up, I don't want to, you know, take a long time and line in front of somebody else and have a discussion or a conversation with her, but... Um, what breaks my heart is these people, and I know the world is saying, oh, you got to leave these people alone and all that and, and let them make their decision. But, you know, the world hasn't let them alone and the world hasn't let them make their decision. Somebody's influenced them to, to make those decisions in those ways. And uh, they tell us we can't influence them back in the other way. And that's all right. But we can influence them through our prayers. We can pray for these people. We can make it a point. To, to pray for these people. Um, so that, that's what I would encourage you to do is, is when you run into these situations, pray to God and ask for directions. You know, it, you know what, what Lord do you want me to do? Because while I was in the store waiting to see if the line changed and waiting for the dog, um, I had the opportunity to share my faith with several other people who are very open to it. And um, in fact, when I was leaving, I went out in the parking lot and there was a guy getting the carts, you know, how they pick up the carts and put them away. And, and uh, I gave him one of my cards and I asked him uh, where he went to high school. And he says, uh, and he said where he went to high school. And I said, well, that's great, Harrison. He had a name tag on it. I said, Harrison. And I said, that's great. I said, you know, there's a room there named after me at your high school. And of course, I tell people there's a room named after me. It's Jim in their high school. And I said, there's a room named after me in your high school. He says, yeah, I know it's named Jim. And I said, well, how'd you know that? And he says, uh, I used to work at a different PetSmart where you came to buy something about two years ago. And he said, and you told me that then. And he says, and uh, I still remember it. Your name is Jim. And so I gave him my card and he says, oh, thank you very much. I love Jesus. And, and so it's, um, 
you know, you just you just keep going and keep witnessing and keep telling people about Jesus Christ as much as you possibly can, because that's what we're called to do. That's really why we're still here. We're not still here just to exist and just get through day to day and live our lives till we grow old and die and, and then go to heaven. We're supposed to be in this army. We're supposed to be we're supposed to be doing stuff. I believe we're in the last days and I believe we're in an army. And um, Luke 951 says, now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up, and he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. This is 951 of Luke. 52, and sent messages, messengers before his face. As they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans. And of course, you know, the Samaritans believed differently than the Jews, and the Jews didn't accept the Samaritans, and the Samaritans didn't accept the Jews. He went into a, a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him, in other words, to get a place for him to to wait or to rest. But they did not receive him, Jesus, because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. So they thought, of course, that Samaria was the new Jerusalem, and if he was going to Jerusalem, he couldn't really be the Messiah, and yada, yada, yada. But anyhow, and when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? That was their response. They were the some of the first Christians, James and John. Um, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? Uh, but he turned and rebuked them. Jesus turned and rebuked them. And he said, do you not know that what manner of spirit you are of? For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. You know, oftentimes we want to do that. We want to call down fire on these people that that we uh, don't agree with. Um, and I'm not talking about the girl in, in the store. I'm just talking about some of what we would consider our enemies in general. But, um, <clears throat> but we just, uh, you know, you feel like calling fire down to whoever uh, misled this person to put them in a position where they would be possibly in a position that they could never really uh, turn back to Christ or turn to Christ to begin with. But, um, but anyhow, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Two things. I find it interesting that James and John felt capable of calling down fire from heaven. You know, you know they... they they're amazed at what Jesus is doing. Most of them can't do what Jesus has been doing. They were sent out in, in uh, Luke earlier. They were sent out. He records that them being sent out and uh, going to different villages and healing the sick and casting out demons. But these two guys said, we can call down fire from heaven just like Elijah. You want us to do that, God? And, um, and he said, of course not. That's not why I'm here. If you remember John 3.16, most people know that verse, but they don't know John 3.17. Um, it says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But it goes on to say in 17, God not, did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. And, um, and He had told them this, or they may have overheard it, you know, weeks before when He was talking to uh, Nicodemus in the evening. But... Uh, Jesus said, I didn't come, the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. So how do we respond? Well, secondly, uh, they seem to have no clue what Jesus had come to do. First, calling down heaven, that they could, thought they could do that. But second, they had no clue what Jesus had come to do. I believe the church may be in the same situation today. We seem to be caught between retreating. <clears throat> we seem to be caught between retreating, retreating doing nothing and wanting to destroy those who are in the in the grasp and the surface of our true enemy satan we seem to be caught between retreating doing nothing wanting to destroy those who are in the grasp and the service of our true enemy satan i like most of you i hope you feel this way anyhow i like most of you are sickened by the state of our nation and particularly the politicians and those in leadership it seems it's not just the politicians, but also leaders of large corporations. The enemy seems to be in an urgent mode, knowing his time is very short. Now, he's been around for thousands of years, so timing and timing growing short is, is relative. It could mean as little as a few years or decades or even centuries to him because he's been around for thousands of years before Adam and Eve, and we know that's 6,000 years ago. 
Um, so his time is growing short. Again, it could be decades. It could be could be days. It could be years. It could be decades or even centuries. But it is apparent that we are much closer to that climax than ever before, just by what's going on in the world today. The enemy has obviously established some pretty evil people in high places, from, from our weak, dawdling old fool of a president to his cackling sidekick, the vice president, both who seem to be no more than figureheads. Do you get that? Do I need to repeat that? Satan has pretty evil people in high places, from our weak, dawdling old fool of a president to his cackling sidekick, the vice president, both who seem to be more, no more than figureheads. They're backed by truly evil to the core of Congress and Senate leaders, yet they're no different than Herod who killed the babies or Caesars who tortured and killed Christians. They're all of their father, the devil. In this life, you will serve either God or Satan. There is no neutral ground. So in listening to this or hearing this, you're on one side or the other. Everybody's on one side or the other. There is no, there's no gray area of in between. Now, the only problem is, is you can be inactive on either side. You can be of your father, the devil, and really not participating in anything and really not uh, being part of what these people are doing, killing the babies and, and, uh, and everything else that they have evil planned. Um, you may not be or find yourself part of that, but if you're not of Christ, then you're, you're the devil. And you could be on the other side and be of Christ and really doing nothing and, um, and, and just kind of coasting through life and not doing what Christ asks you to do at all. Um, he wants us to go and seek and save the lost. That's why Jesus came. He, that's why we're here. John 8, 44 says, You are of your father the devil and desires of your father you want to do. This is him speaking to the Pharisees. You're of your father the devil and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. He's full of fake news. There's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he's a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. This is he's speaking to the Pharisees. But when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he's a liar and the father of it. So should we be surprised of all the fake news we get? Should we be surprised at all these liars that are lying to us about what's going on in this world and lying to us about Mass, no mass, Wuhan, no Wuhan, help finance it, didn't help finance it. It's back and forth it goes, back and forth it goes. And um, you're, you're a father of the devil and the desires of the father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he's a liar and the father of it. And then Jesus said, but because I tell you the truth, you do not believe him. You, you just you don't want to believe Jesus. You don't want to believe the truth. The truth is, you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. You're going to have eternal life or you're going to have eternal judgment. You choose. And um, whether you think of yourself as being of the, a, a child of Satan or you think of yourself as being a child of Christ, it, it's so important. You, you need to know what you're doing. If you think you're a child of of Satan, then you're in big trouble. But most people don't realize it. They, they're naive to it. These people and all the follow them are serving Satan. And unfortunately, many or even most of them don't even know it. They're deceived, but they seem to take a pleasure, take pleasure in their situation. They're happy. They're content <clears throat> with their life of deception. And um, this is this is what it says in the last days that the Lord will allow them to believe a lie. And uh, these people are believing these lies. But Matthew 6, 24 says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You cannot serve both God and the things of this world. God and mammon, the things of this world. <clears throat> Joshua 24, 15. He said this to the people in, uh, of Israel in his last days. <clears throat> he stood on a mountaintop. <clears throat> And he basically pointed in two directions, and it, he said this, And if it seems evil to you, and by the way, Joshua is um, the Hebrew word for Jesus, Yeshua. And so um, the difference is Jesus was um, Jesus the Christ. He was the anointed one. Joshua was uh, just 
a figurehead in Israel representing in a sense Christ as he took the people in the promised land and he says if it seems if it if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord choose you this day whom you will serve if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord then choose you this day whom you will serve with the gods whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood that's in Egypt whether you choose to serve the gods back in Egypt all the thousands of gods that they served or the gods of the Amorites which was uh, the the evil people of the that had overtaken the promised land of God in whose land you dwell now but as for me and my house we will serve the Lord he says you got a choice you, you, you know serve either enemy whichever enemy you want to serve whether it's <clears throat> the gods back <clears throat> before uh, the the before crossing the Red Sea or the gods that that uh, of the Amorites which were pagan gods Baal and all those <clears throat> but as for me and my house we'll serve the Lord so it's really a choice and it comes down to that that choice and um, Jesus put it this way come to me all of you who are struggling and burdened I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me because I am in gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light <clears throat> if you notice something that Jesus is, is saying all the time he's saying see me as an example take my yoke upon you and learn from me you know, many people said, well, I've taken the yoke of Christ upon me, but I haven't learned a thing. I'm not, my life isn't really lived for Christ. There's no obvious evidence of Christ in my life. Um, there's no evidence I'm not sharing the gospel. I'm not, I'm not living my life like that. I live day to day. Um, <clears throat> I live just to live. And um, I live for other things, but I'm not living for Christ and Christ alone, like we sang in that song by the Katinas. I'll give you my heart, I'll give you my soul, I'll give you my mind. Of course, that's from Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, where Jesus said, uh, he quoted Deuteronomy 6 when he said, Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your strength. And then he added, And your neighbor as yourself. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. You know, he added, And love your neighbor as, my, as yourself, because after he went to the cross <clears throat> and paid for all of mankind's sin, and after he resurrected and took his place next to the Father in heaven, um, we're to love our neighbors ourselves because there's an opportunity now, not just for Israel to be saved, but for all the Gentiles of this world to be saved. <clears throat> he says, take my yoke upon you, learn from me, follow my example, because I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And so you look at yourself and say, <clears throat> is that me? Did I take the low yoke of Jesus upon and learn from him? Am I gentle and humble in heart? <clears throat> I look at myself and I don't see that. And I see that there's so much room for improvement. And I need to learn from him. I need to continually learn from him. And I don't know where you are with all that, but uh, I know where I am and that's all I can really deal with other than in prayer for others but um, I'm gentle and humble in heart <clears throat> excuse me come and you'll find rest for your soul for my yoke is easy and my burden is light just as Joshua presented a decision to the Israelites that day Jesus represented a decision to all those who we call our enemies <clears throat> that we should be presented with a decision to determine who they will serve we get to help decide who these other people are going to serve through our prayers. Now the decision, of course, the final decision is theirs, but we can rebuke the influencers. The, the gathering, the demonic gathering, Jesus walked up to him and he had been chained away from the city. They didn't want him in near the city because he was nuts and, and uh, they didn't want him to be part of their community because he didn't fit, so they chained him up away from the city. And Jesus approached him, and he saw the real problem. The real problem was the demons that were controlling him. And he rebuked those demons, and they came out, and the guy was a changed person. <clears throat> so although we're not in the business necessarily of going up to people and driving out the demons, because we're probably not in a position to recognize what demons are in them, but... <clears throat> Jesus was showing here was a guy that was so terribly, terribly possessed by demons, so acting under the, under the guidance of the demons that lived in him that they spoke through him. And um, 
and he went up to them and, and he cleaned the demons out of him and uh, he was a changed man and he said can I come follow you he said no go back and tell people in your city what's happened to you <clears throat> So we're called after we're saved to go out and tell people about what Jesus has done in our lives. So as distasteful as it may seem to us, we need to pray for our fellow humans that they would have an open opportunity to make their own choice. That's what that's what it's all about. That Gadarene could have chose to 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 remain where he was, but he chose to follow Jesus after the demons were driven out of him. We need to fight against the demonic forces that are controlling the people that are in these situations. <clears throat> what we do is when we speak, we're either speaking in agreement with the Lord or we're speaking in agreement with the enemy. And um, when we watch some of these uh, people do what they do and say, oh, I knew she was going to be like, I knew he was going to be like that. I, you know, it doesn't surprise me that they're doing this terrible thing and, and how come this evil person isn't fighting against uh, abortions and they're just such an evil person and see we're in a sense agreeing in prayer about that person when we should be saying lord god deliver them deliver them from this demonic force that that's controlling them <clears throat> but i know it's very difficult as it says in ephesians 6 our battle isn't against flesh and blood but principalities and power in high places and we tend to forget that and we look at the individuals because we can see them we don't see the the demonic forces ruling them Jesus and died. Jesus died and rose again to put us in a place of victory, a place of authority over those enemies who seek to destroy other humans and before they can make a clear decision for or against Christ. The enemy is keeping those people occupied mentally in, in their beliefs and their thoughts. And we think it's them, but they're being, they're being occupied and driven by their father, the enemy. And it's him we're fighting against. It's not it's not the individual that we're fighting against, it's the person. But it's very difficult, uh, it's very difficult to, to take that stance because our natural tendency is to immediately judge them. Our responsibility is to battle against the powers who would prevent these people from making a clear decision. And if you are like me, you find it very difficult to rise up above the human fleshly carnal response to a godly response to others' actions. If you're like me, you may find it very difficult to rise above the human fleshly carnal response to a godly response to others' actions. If you're like me, you'll tend to instantly go to judgment rather than prayer. And if you're like me, it takes a purposeful effort to press down the tendency to judge and replace it with a positive response. Given time, I can do that, Given, but oftentimes I'm in situations where I snap back out of the flesh rather than taking the time to say okay what what should be my response here um, so I go to the scriptures to help Matthew 7 1 judge not that you be not judged for with what judgment you judge you will be judged and with the measurement you use you'll be measured back to you now I'm not I don't think we're talking about salvation here but I think we're talking about our lives and, and the results in our lives if you um, Whatever you meet out to others, it's going to be meet, going to be meted back to you. And so, um, you know, I think of the Lord's prayer. You know, you know, forgive others is you know you expect to forgive them, or and um, you know, and it, we pray that prayer. A lot of people pray that prayer all the time. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against trespass against us. So um, <clears throat> I try and keep that in mind. It doesn't always come out, and that's what we have to work on. That's the more time we spend in prayer and the Holy Spirit. I believe the more time that we'll respond more correctly. This is what it says in Corinthians ten. Three, and I remember when my wife first uh, brought this scripture to me, and I, I can't remember the incident or what was going on at the time, but she's the one that pointed me to this at one point. Um, it, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into the captivity to the obedience of Christ. Casting down arguments, in other words, don't get into the argument because all it does is exalt the enemy, it exalts against the knowledge of God, 
bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ immediately if you can do that so these are the scriptures that I think of and then the one of course that I go back to so often because it's so important to a Christian today and I believe that uh, most of us um, you know don't think about this text enough but Romans 12 I beseech you bro therefore brother and this is Paul crying out, I really 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 beseech you <clears throat> in, in a sense I, I beg you therefore brethren by the mercies of God not by your own flesh but by the mercies of God present your bodies a living sacrifice a holy holy and acceptable to God which is your reasonable service given what Christ did for us the reasonable thing that we can do is to follow his ideals and his ideal or his ideology was not that he didn't come into the world to call fire down on the on the people that disagreed with him he loved the Samaritans we know that because of the woman at the well he loved the Samaritans just as much as he loved the Israelites in in Jerusalem but they wanted to call down fire because they disagreed with him and he said no you don't know what spirit you're of because he's saying you're on the wrong side with this case boys this is not how we respond anymore that's how we responded in the old testament before the new covenant but with the, under the new covenant we don't respond like that we respond he said with humility and uh and love and uh, the only way we can do that for most people is to enter into the frail and fight the enemy to fight the demons that control these people <clears throat> Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have to do it by changing our mind and our thoughts. And Jesus says, pick up my, his yoke and follow him. Learn from me and follow me and learn from me. And too often we're not spending enough time in the scriptures. We're not spending enough time to learn from him what we should do. And it's not just the scriptures. It's time in the scriptures. It's time in prayer. It's time in witnessing and sharing the gospel. <clears throat> so do not be conformed to this world but transformed by the renewing of your mind you don't know of what spirit you are of James and John do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by renewing your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God you want to do what God wants you to do then be transformed in your mind be transformed in your mind do what is good and acceptable the perfect will of God by knowing what that is you can't possibly know what that is unless you live in the scriptures if you live in in the presence of the Holy Spirit you can't possibly know what God wants you to do with that girl in the store I said Lord I don't know what you want me to do in this situation I don't know what you want me to do <clears throat> I can pray for her I can ask Jesus to to bind the evil spirits that are controlling her thoughts and I know somebody might watch this and say oh you're awful for trying to keep that girl from changing into a boy <clears throat> But the reality of it is, is she's not going to change into a boy. She's going to, she's going to put on a, a male costume on the outside. For some reason, I don't know why, but she's going to put on a male costume. She'll still be a female inside her chromosome. The, the thing that decides whether you're male or female, it, it, it won't change. Until they get into being able to change somebody's uh, chromosomes, um, it, they're not truly changed. They've only put on a... A vitamin enforced or a medical or, or prescription enforced um, <clears throat> thing to change what they appear to be on the outside that's that's all but they're they're not really if they stop taking all that stuff they'll go back to what they were so um, but I I thought you know what do I say Lord you know and he said in a sense don't say anything the line never got shorter I was there for about 10 15 minutes while the dog was getting there nails trimmed I had to pay for it first that's it so right at the beginning I was uh, I was waiting the whole time and the line just kept getting longer instead of shorter I said okay Lord I get I get your message I'll just witness to those that I can witness to and I'll pray for those who I can't um, Paul says he died daily he was a living sacrifice and he died daily uh, he said that in Corinthians he said I died daily and um, and that's that's what we have to do we have to die to ourselves daily um, Jesus said pick up your cross and follow me um, we need to we need to follow Jesus in a true in a true way and um, we have to decide which side are we on Jesus way is definitely not simple <clears throat> but it's the only way it's not the simple way but it's the only way 
Jesus, I know my flesh would respond wrong most of the time, and uh, and it only it only gets better when I concentrate on doing what Christ wants me to do. And uh, it's not nearly enough, but uh, I, I need to do that more. And I encourage you to do that more, to find His way in your life. It says in Matthew 7, 13, Enter, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because the narrow gate is difficult and, and is because the, because the narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. We need to keep in mind who it is that's our enemy. The thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. I've come that they may have life, and they may have it more abundantly. So choose today, because in the near future we'll be presented with many difficult decisions. You need to choose today who, you, who it is you're going to serve. Make that choice that Joshua said. Who is it you're going to serve? For me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. I made that decision 40 years ago for me and my household. And uh, really, it began with my wife getting saved. But uh, I made that decision. But each one of them still got to make that independent, that decision independent of my decision. But uh, you need to choose today who you're going to serve. Father, I praise you, and I thank you, and I give you the glory in Jesus' precious name. I pray for all those out there who don't know you, that they would be free at least long enough to make a clear decision for or against you, that they would be free long enough to know what they're deciding for themselves. We know what's going to happen in the end. We see what happens when the devil is loosed after the thousand-year reign and the the multitudes that follow him that are full of rebellion and evil in their hearts. And that's even after they've lived under your leadership for a thousand years. I don't know, Lord, I just, uh, I just pray and do my part is to pray and to share the gospel and try and uh, try to learn from you and follow you and be more like you. Uh, i got a long ways to go. In Jesus' name, amen.